Today on this old house, we finished the house that we started seven months ago. Do you remember what it used to look like? Oh, yeah. We switched that up a little bit. I think you're right, you did. Guys, uh, happy, excited? Absolutely, it's been an incredible experience. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. How excited are you guys to see that? Extremely. Right? You're going to have to choke down some dust first, though, before you get to that part. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the way. Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. and welcome back to a special episode of This Old House. Special because today we finished the house that we started seven months ago. Now, you may remember the original 1949 ranch that was here. It was one story, lived in by the original builder and homeowner, and it had very few upgrades. And look what Jeff Sweener and his crew have built for them. They popped it up to a second story. There's that sweeping gambrel roof. And that's because our homeowners asked for a shingle style home in the Dutch colonial style, something that they thought would fit in nicely here in their seaside town of Westerly, Rhode Island. Looks beautiful out here. Let's have a look inside. Jeff, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Holy mackerel, you and your team did an unbelievable job. Thanks. It looks phenomenal on the outside. Oh, well, thank you. Well, let me show you on the inside. We're almost ready to turn it over to Scott and Shayla. All right, where do you want to begin? So let's start in the original section of the house. Remember this long, dark hallway? Dark, knotty pine, even on the ceiling. It was like a bowling alley. Very dark. Nice now, though, huh? Yep. So this bathroom got a little bit of an upgrade. I'd say a little bit more than a little upgrade. So Shayla's office, she really wanted some big heaping barn doors here, which we gave her. This so used to be a bedroom, right? It used right? to be a bedroom. So now she's got a nice view out to the backyard. That's great. We got some built-ins, open shelving, a little bit of accent light, and some nice self-closing drawers. And across the hall, remember there used to be a bedroom here, where well, we turned that into a laundry. A really nice laundry room. Look at that. Huh? Stone countertops, sink, cabinets. That's nice. And so remember that green carpet room? Oh man, this was yeah. a nasty was little room. Nice for you here. Wow. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> what a difference. So kids' playroom. Yep. Uh, television if you need it. Lots of light. Yep. And, and remember look, that naughty pine? Look at that, huh? So you brought back the naughty pine. What is that? A Whitewash or something? Yeah, yeah. So Norm and I installed that. We milled it all down, installed it, and Morrow came in, did a whitewash on it. Beautiful. And then we got this little desk area for the kids. Very clever, right? Bolton board up top, board. shelving. I love it. So we ended up adding a bathroom here. So now this could become a master suite if need be on oh. the first floor. Double vanity here. Yep. Toilet tucked around the corner. Shower here. Nice glass doors. I love it. Yeah. Place is looking terrific, Jeff. We're getting there. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Tommy, how are you? Good, Jeff. How are you doing? Good. Down to the wire up here. We got one last detail on this bathroom. Yeah, we're going to hang this glass door here. It's a pretty interesting door, too. Yeah, so it's just one piece, so it's kind of a splash panel, but it's got hinges, so it's a door. Yeah, exactly. We got a quarter inch glass. We got holes for towel bar. It's got handle. a nice little curve on it there, too. Nice. So that makes sense. All right. All right, so, so we've got to mount that hinge first. Okay, we're gonna put the hinges on the outside. Yeah, we'll put the main part of the hinge sticking out. Your side. Yep. All right, see if you can get that screw in one of those holes. Okay, that one's set. Your side. 
Now we can drill the holes. All right, we should be able to get the screws in those holes. All right, so now we'll cover all those plates and screw heads. Well, this shower door only goes halfway, but... Well, it's perfect for the tub. They're two young girls, so you get full access to give them the tub and... Right, and if you want to take a shower, you're going to get some protection there. That's perfect. All right. All right, Tommy, let me show you the girls' room. Yeah. Oh, remember this door hanging this door, how heavy that was? All these doors are inch and three quarter. They're really made well, oh, but they're they, heavy. They glide like butter with this ball bearing hinges. Well, that's why I need a ball bearing yeah. hinge, or other than that, it would wear out. Yeah, so I love this cottage window with the, on the center on the bed there. All the natural light coming yeah, in. This is beautiful. Scott says this is the best view in the house. I think he's right. <laughs> you can see Block Island yep. and the ocean. Yep. So the lucky girl. Oh, I say. All right, so Tommy, let me show you Emily's room. Yeah, this is a nice space too. So remember we had all of that reclaimed flooring that we took up from downstairs. We had it stacked in that closet. Yeah. And it was so dark and patinaed, and look how nicely it's sanded out. It matches the new stuff. People don't realize you sand it, put a finish on it, you bring the wood back to life. Yeah, I'll say. I love this wallpaper yeah, with all this, the butterflies. It's a nice accent wall. Very nice. The kid's going to like it. Yeah. All right, so out here in the hallway, we've got a nice custom built-in that features in the center of the wall here. And Riley did an awesome job with this in the shop. Yeah, he did. I like these circles. <laughs> really sweet. So this area is, is really just a quiet reading area where the girls can hang out and read a book. Play, play on their, their laptop. Computer. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And these balusters, I like the thickness of these. Nice yeah, and heavy. And three quarter, yep. Newel post with the recessed panels. Yeah, another thing we did in the shop. Really sweet. All right, so let me show you the master. Okay. So I really like the high ceilings in here with the crown molding. The high ceilings really give the whole space a different dimension. Yeah, it really yeah. feels bigger. Yeah, you know? and I love the gambrel accent. Oh, yeah. Remember standing this wall up? Oh, that was a big wall. <laughs> it was a heavy wall. All this natural light again, and I, you know what? I think it's a toss-up on who's got the best view here. Yeah, Marlin might have a little better angle at Block Island. Yeah, but you can still see the ocean. Yep. So let's check out the bath. All right. So we got pocket door here. Yeah. And his and her vanities with natural light in the middle. We That's love great. to bring natural That's light great. in. So we got walk in closet on this side. Yeah. A lot of storage there. Check out the shower. Big shower. All that light right in here. Plenty of drain in the back, so the whole floor pitches yep. back. Those are nice. Yeah. And look what we did here with that gambrel. This is what I love about the gambrel. You can tuck these little nooks in there and make it look custom. A lot custom. of storage there. Yeah, I think Scott and Shaler are really going to be happy with it. I think you're right. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. The old front entryway was right here, but very different. It was a narrow door with a closet right here, and then the space was choked down by a wall to the den right here. Now we've got the door with the glass panels and the side lights wide open, and this wall is gone. We've got the open staircase. These were actually prefabricated in Jeff's shop, installed in sort of one piece. And let I me mean, look at this, with the oak treads, the balustrade, and the oak handrail look spectacular. Now right down here, there was a door separating the kitchen from the rest of the house. That is gone because Scott and Shayla, you guys wanted an open floor plan. Um, but first off, are you happy? Are you excited? We are very happy. Very much so. <laughs> awesome. I think the smiles say it all. How about showing me around? Sure. Definitely. Let's start with the mudroom. Okay. So we took out the original washer and dryer and added these floor to ceiling pantries with some built in cubbies. Very nice. We wanted to have a bench seat for the girls with some uh, storage in there. That'll get filled up in no time. Definitely. And then when you come through the door, there's this nice, what we like to call kind of the drop zone for some keys, mm -hmm. put up the monthly calendars. Beautiful. And then over here on this side, we had a closet that ran the full length of this wall. So we've eliminated that to gain that room back in the kitchen. Nice entryway leading onto a beautiful new kitchen. 
And what a difference from what used to be here. That small space with the Formica countertops, the old pine cabinets, which were built by the old homeowner in place, but dated for sure. Yes, so we removed those pine cabinets. We went with just with a uh, crisp white cabinet. We raised the ceiling up an extra foot, yeah. went all the way up to the top of the cabinets. Mm -hmm. um, we added a nice gas range. Six so burners, and you guys actually had to add propane for this. That's correct. There's not city service up here, so we had to put a thousand gallon tank in the lawn here. Nice. Big island to replace the old peninsula. Yeah, so um, on the island we have a drawer microwave, some extra drawers for storage, added the prep sink on the island because I'm envisioning uh, prepping food and vegetables here while everybody's out in the open space playing. Right, and plenty more workspace on the perimeter cabinets, mm -hmm. a big double sink, and look at the light pouring into this kitchen. There were three windows here before, but we've expanded them and then opened up the dining room into the kitchen area. Right, because there used to be a wall separating the two rooms, but with that down, one big wide open space. Correct. So this corner used to be an entryway. Yes, yeah, so this was inside corner previously with a Dutch door, and we've removed that and turned it into an outside corner to really add some space to the dining area. Square it off, gives you plenty of room for a dining table, and I guess sort of an informal look. Yeah, that's exactly what we were going for. Um, just a nice big white uh, table, uh, mm -hmm. just kind of for everybody to gather. We went with a bench to keep it casual. Nice, very crisp and clean. Mm -hmm. So Dutch door is gone, but new doors are in place and just a wall of glass. Right, so we have a 13 foot opening here and uh, we have double sliding doors. Love that. No more small little deck. I mean, you guys got a whole separate room out here. Right, the deck was very small before and we've expanded it significantly. Nice, lots of light, I like it. Over on this side, low partitions between the two spaces. Yes, we added a white oak countertop with a clear finish, some additional storage cabinets, mm -hmm. and a beverage fridge. Who doesn't love a beverage fridge? On the other side of that, the new family room. <laughs> and, I mean, this is incredible. There always was a step down into the old family room, but other than that, I don't think there's anything that's the same. Right, we had that massive fireplace here that was two-sided, it's right 10 here. by six, yeah. so we removed that and it's really opened up a lot of room in the living area. Yeah, you come through the front door, you see into this, but you also see right out the back through another wall of glass. Right, so it's another 13 foot opening with a double slider door. Beautiful, and so you did keep fire though, or I should say you brought it back in place with the gas unit. Yes. That's great, and the fireplace and the surround, that's a whole new aesthetic from the old knotty pine. It is, and we brought the white oak into the living room space with these floating shelves and added shiplap with a nickel gap detail. Brought the same blue in from the kitchen into these cabinets. Terrific, yep. And so for the furnishings, um, the blue couches, sort of a uh, beachy feel, right? Mm -hmm. Be nice if I had a little place to put my feet, though. You got anybody who can build us a table? Oh, look at this, right <laughs> on cue. <laughs> Well, wow. This was a fun project, I can tell you that, especially because it was an ellipse. Yep. And we spent a couple days on it, Jeff, Riley, Peter, myself, and Scott came in and worked on the finish. And you've actually got some connection to the wood. Correct, yeah, so the wood came out of my great uncle's barn. It's probably been in there for 70 years. He was a carpenter. And uh, yeah, we were able to salvage some of it and make a table out What of it. is the finish? So we used a golden oak stain to pick up the white oak, and then we did a polyurethane finish on top of that. Durable enough so that you can put ah! your... Uh oh <laughs> Just kidding. So, Scott Shaley, what do you guys think? You like? I do. It fits the space perfectly. I think it's fantastic. Nice job, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, Tommy. Landscaping looks beautiful. Thank you. So what we're doing down here is hydro seeding. We have sod all up around the house area, but coming down the hill, we don't really need to use it back here and it can save us a little bit of money. Well, that's important. Uh, so hydro seeding is gonna go all along this whole back area where the guys are raking out and the prep is the same as you prepare for sod. You rake it out, you incorporate loam and compost. And what this hydro seed is, is a combination of mulch, seed, and fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Like that mix? Yeah, oh yeah. It's basically a paper product or a cellulose that holds everything together and then the seed is mixed into that along with water. Right, so when you spray it down, it keeps the seed in place and also helps keep moisture in to germinate. Right. Now is that the same seed that this uh, sod is? Yep, they are both fescue. So where we got the sod from, they gave us the exact seed from there to match. Oh, perfect. In a couple weeks, you're not gonna even know the difference. I know you've got all the plantings in. I'd like to see the hardscape. Let's take a look. It's looking spectacular. Let's all check right. it out. 
Do you remember what it used to look like? Oh yeah, I remember the driveway going straight with the garage down under. Yeah, it was like a, just a tunnel straight in. Yeah. So we switched that up a little bit. I might say, yeah, you think you're right, you did. Yeah, so we have this whole new parking area. Yeah. And what we're gonna do is travel up this beautiful walkway. So we made it do a nice curve, so and it's centered on this parking area. So it's, a, it, it's more of an inviting entry. Well, it is an inviting entry. It's like the edge of a photograph right here, but the lot is back because of the curve of the street. So right. you brought this curve down around and into the driveway. But what I really like about the bluestone here is the joints that you've kept. I notice that you've kept them parallel mm -hmm. with the house. They don't cut each stone first before they lay it down. No, we lay the dimension pieces and then you take point A and point B, mark it, and then cut it with a saw. Sounds easier to me. <laughs> Okay, so this is the pathway to the front main entrance. Yeah, I like it. It's nice and wide, it's welcoming, and it draws us right into the front door. That said, you want to go check out the patio in the back? All right, lead the way. Okay, Tommy, so here are a series of outdoor rooms. This is a great place to sit, sun, read on the deck. Plenty of sun. But this is an area here I really like. This, I love how it's just a couple steps down. It's a little nook. So in the original plan, we were going to take the patio all the way to the end of the house. Right. But there were also budget constraints. So we said, why don't we shrink it instead of changing what it is. Nice. Now this is the same bluestone basically that's in the front, but it has a different texture. In the front, we have thermal bluestone. This is called natural clef. It has the texture and a variety of color. Yeah, and a beautiful pergola to sit under also. There's so many great spaces to entertain yeah, back here. Absolutely. So if you remember, these are what we got from the granite quarry. Mm -hmm. So these are very comfortable. They are a wide tread with a low riser, very comfortable. So when they come in with groceries from the garage after they build it, it's going to be easy access in and easy access out for the kids. Right. Well, you did a beautiful job on the landscaping and the hardscaping. Thanks. It came together pretty well. It sure did. I got to go meet up with Jeff. All right. See you at the flagpole. Big changes down here in the basement, right? Yeah, do you remember this was the garage the car used to pull in here and there was a big oil tank here. That's all gone. Usable space here. Yep. Look at this, the door that our apprentice Catherine made. That's nice. Now we had that big heat pump water heater out here that takes the air from the room. We put it into this room. Yeah. And this is great because it can actually gather that heat, make it efficiently into the water heater, saves a lot of electricity. This is the base of operations for hot water going out to the building, but also cold water. Cold water main here comes up to a nice organized manifold. Here's cold water manifold with shutoff valves. We'll label these before we're done. Hot water right here. Okay. Also have one full size line of cold water that comes out here oh, and yeah. goes out to irrigation. Really important on the outside of the house will be a backflow preventer because we want to make sure that nothing that happens potentially with lawn chemicals or anything could go backwards into the water supply. So we went through the foundation for that, but we also went through the foundation for these windows. Those were cut into the concrete. Yeah, yeah. We wanted a little bit of ventilation in light in an otherwise dark basement. Right, and then they put a partition here, but we added these louvers right here so that some of the heat in the basement can be used for that water heat. Terrific. And the main operation? Right here. So this was the original part of the basement. Remember, there was a big old boiler here. I do. We had the wide open joists, those beautiful full nominal lumber joists that would span this way. They're all been covered and insulated right. now. Right. And the reason we had to cut those new windows in on the other side was because we covered these up. The deck sits right over them now, That's so right. we wouldn't get much air or light. Now it's a place for ping pong. I'll take you on later. Game on, it's baby. It's my game. <laughs> uh, perfectly installed, insulated, sealed ductwork. Coming back to here to this mechanical room, we have another one on the top floor for the second Floor. Catherine's doors are everywhere. Right. Now here is a really well-designed comfort system. Everything communicates with each other. Here's the motorized dampers right here, and that talks down to the fan that's going to modulate, and then the burner that can come on and off. It's a gas-fired burner. When it needs it, it's going to have humidity. There's a steam humidifier that's going to put steam right into the airstream, cool. and that'll, that'll make the air humidified. And then in a building this tight, we always have to have a thing like this, an energy recovery ventilator. So stale air goes across the core inside here, fresh air goes in the other direction. And now it'll go into the airstream. And so by the time it comes out here, this air will be properly heated, cooled, humidified, and it'll have fresh air in it. And our fuel source in this case is propane. We upgraded right, it's propane, that system. And for that, we've got this uh, flexible supply, stainless steel supply to each of the devices that are here. But there is one new mechanical system that actually resides outside the building. 
Okay, when we first got here, there was that old cesspool, that brick chamber. It had outlived its usefulness. It was time to go. That's gone. We got a lot of stuff under the ground you don't see. You might remember we put a thousand gallon liquefied propane tank right here. Anchored to the ground. Right. And then we've got the main drain now coming out here to this subgrade septic system. It starts with that 1500 gallon tank that works conventionally but it takes some of that water and pumps it up across these sheets right. that sit here, ba bacteria rich. And what it does, it breaks down the nitrogen to make the nitrogen go that way out through the roof instead of going into the aquifer. And we're going to these lengths because of the surrounding water. Right, and we got the ocean too, so we got to worry about both. Right. The last step is to take that water from here and go down to this leaching field. And by the time it gets down there, it's just about clean enough to drink. Nice. I'm not going to drink it, but it's, you know. Good for another 70 yeah. years. <laughs> This is a good way to wrap it up, huh? <laughs> so, Deshaun, you actually helped us clean it up. How'd that go? Yeah, just scraped it down, sanded it, and gave you three coats. All right. So, this is the end of the road for you guys in your apprenticeship. Catherine, yes. uh, did you enjoy it? What'd you learn? I loved it. It was an amazing experience. I learned everything from general carpentry to interior design, a little bit of HVAC, electrical. I loved every minute of it. You think you're going to keep with it? I am definitely going to keep with it. I'm thinking about going to building. Look at that, Jeff. You've converted yeah. one, huh? And how about you, Deshaun? What did you take away from the experience? I took away so many great skills and I learned so much from great people and also the teamwork. It was the best experience ever. I love to hear it. Well, I know that you two are going to be leaving yeah, us, so, so thank fun. you for working with us and good luck. Thank you. And Ryan, you're sticking around. You're going to stay with Sweener Builders. Um, tell us about your experience. Uh, it was an awesome experience. I came in with little experience. Um, but I learned from a lot of experienced carpenters and I learned the most important thing is to care about the little things because uh, they'll come back and bite you in the end if you don't. You're gonna keep them, Jeff? I'm gonna keep them. Of course, all right. So you got a plan for getting this thing up? We do, we're gonna do a little bit of pushing, a little bit of pulling, and we're probably gonna need a few more hands. Well, we've got hands, so we can bring them in. All right. Come on in, guys. Okay, ready to go? Yeah, let's go, go up. It's good, you oh, oh. All right, Scott, you do the honors. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, Scott and Shayla, many happy years in your new house. Jeff, thanks to you and your entire team for a job well done. And for all of us, we are wrapped here in Westerly, Rhode Island. But we will be back next week with a special four-part series as we follow the people who rebuild after the worst wildfire in California history. So next week, we're coming to you from paradise. Until then, for this old house and everyone, I'm Kevin O'Connor, and that's a wrap. Yeah. All right. Good job, Steph. Hold on. Scott, good job. Good job. Shayla, hold on. High five. Yeah. Beautiful home. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.